We're always we're, we're always ready, 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 ready. Absolutely, we should have some people coming in, and I'm going to get this over to Facebook for everyone jumping in. The Facebook. Facebook. What'd you say, Gabe? The Facebook. The Facebook. The Facebook. Absolutely. <laughs> I totally forgot, Joe. Where are you at in the country? Springfield, Missouri. Oh, okay. Oh God, you're like four hours away from me. Yeah, you, you and are. Laura are almost almost neighbors. Yeah, we are. Where are you at again, Laura? I am on the other side of the river from St. Louis. Okay. Um, you probably are more familiar with O'Fallon or uh, Sky yeah. Air Force Base, Belleville. Yeah, okay. I'm a little bit. I'm out in the country. Okay. We have got um, someone on our sales team that works remote for us who would actually be like 30 minutes from you. Oh, yeah? That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, you and I can certainly <laughs> have a meeting somewhere in between if we ever want to get together in person. Absolutely. I How did you fare through those storms last weekend? <laughs> oh, my gosh. They were crazy. And yeah. we're supposed to well, be having more coming through today. And Oklahoma got hit last night, I think. Yeah, we had 12 tornadoes in our area. One went directly over our house. It sucked the, you know, the the attic where you have that little square and you it sucked that square up into the attic. It was so close. And then wow. it touched down about a mile and a half. Maybe See, not even that. I, I was all about to say, I don't know how you how y'all live like in like with tornadoes and stuff growing up in Idaho and in, in Denver dealing with the cold, but we're considering moving to Texas. All of a sudden, as I went to say it, I'm like, wait, that's. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know as you're looking at properties in Texas and I can help you figure out what you ought to be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to bunker down. Yeah. Everyone, it. thanks for joining. Um, as you know, we're talking about real estate before we're even talking about real estate. I've got Gabe Cordova, Laura here. Gabe, what, what all do you do? You oh my, what day? What day? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I mean, I'm first and foremost, obviously, agent, uh, team lead here at Core Group EXP. Uh, I'll let Laura introduce her. We've known each, uh, herself. We've known each other for a long time. She's part of our team and doing a lot of other wonderful things. But uh, on top of uh, Core Group here, also a uh, real, uh, realtor in residence for Wailopo, uh, basically their version of a coach to help people, uh, you know, basically convert and higher numbers and leverage technology and automation uh, and all the digital marketing that they do, whether it's stuff that they're generating or like ZBuyer, you'll see a lot of the stuff that we're implementing and building is tying multiple things together. So I travel around quite a bit, also teaching and, and helping a lot of their agents and, and teams use tech actually use it yeah and yeah. Laura what I I know you have a lot of roles but what what's your main role following with Gabe my main role is the sales director for core group at exp I'm also a realtor in residence um, with Wailopo and I just started um with Tristan Ahumada as a coach for a brilliant tribe so, I didn't know that. Congratulations. Yeah. That's amazing. You. I'm excited about it. Yeah. So I've got, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I got my hands full as well. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, myself, um, with Z Buyer, I'm the head of growth for the company. So I get to spend my time working with fabulous individuals like Gabe and Laura, um, that work our leads, you know, and convert them at a high level and build processes to help show other people how they can replicate the same system and put those things in place if you don't already. Um, Gabe has been with us for about six months now. We started sending leads and you're using us in a couple different markets, Boise um, and- Boise and Denver is where we kind of started. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that's where we started. Um, but within the last month, you've also taken on leads in Texas and Arizona. Um, so two fairly new markets as well. Um, so it's going to be really exciting to see what's changed because we did a webinar a month in, we did a webinar, I believe it was three months in, and at this point we're six months in, and yep. I know a lot has changed, but you maybe want to start with showing us numbers. What does it look like so far? Yeah, absolutely. And I think for anybody watching this, and I, I mean, I'm assuming a lot of these people are probably in the Z buyer group, which is awesome because there's a ton of information being shared in there, uh, going back and forth. Uh, and, and as far as numbers, it's, it's a lot of what we expected uh, and some things that we didn't. So like anything, it's about the nurture game and nurture process uh, to go in. So uh, jumping in, there's obviously, you know, you're going to hit some right off the bat. Uh, I think our first, and if we go, if anybody has to go back and watch the original 
uh, webinar, the first like month and a half, almost two months, we were really kind of uh, using, I don't want to say our own scripting, but you know, I think more similar scripting to what we'd use for typical sellers, uh, PPC buyers, things like that. Uh, and then I went through uh, that training that you guys had done with um i'm trying isaiah to colton isaiah yeah yeah. Nexus. yeah nexus as i was looking for nexus i remembered isaiah and really tweaked what we were saying on the initial calls which has made a big difference um but what has been really cool so boise denver a little bit longer uh process or right around those six months is you know i think we got up right around into that 10 percent conversion and then and i'm going to show you i'm going to jump into the crm conversion for us uh meaning you know we've spoken to the person identified it's a real person with a need or desire or want to sell at some point, you know, and or converted, right? Because we're not just in the short game for us when we're talking converted, it's, you know, we've had conversations and we know it's going to build, right? So we're building that up. So I think we saw a little uh, a peak of about 10%, but then as we increased and we'll kind of talk, you've got a couple different lead types available. Uh, as we started adding in some other lead sources and their numbers went up, so that brings it down, but we're still hovering in that, you know, seven, eight percent consistently. But I'm really excited with some tweaks that we've made uh, here in just the last month or so, uh, where that's going to go up, right? And and we've had, and anybody that's seen Laura and I speak, we're very transparent. We've had some growing pains as far as how we are handling these, um, primarily with with our ISA team hitting them, and some big shifts we're making right now. And just came back from Boise, sitting down for a day and a half with our team. We're really going to have the agents, I think dedicate two, three days up front on these outside the ISA because it's a different conversation to be had. But what we're seeing, and again, no surprise to anybody, is it's still a nurture game, right? It's still, uh, there's some that are ready right then and there, but it's conversations that are needing to be had to plant the seed and then staying in front of them. So, so I'm excited to see, especially, you know, it's been an interesting six months, right? Because it was tail end going into the holidays, and then it's been the first three months of, for what's been us in, in our markets, crazy, uh, just, you know, drops and declines and in interest rates and stuff. So, you know, do I wish it was better? Yes. Am, am I glad it's seven to 8%? Absolutely. And I think Laura, when we were going through it, she's like, she's like, it's better than average, right? Just stay with it. We'll stick with the game. We've got a lot in the pipeline. So I don't, Laura, your side, I mean, you're, you're heading up the sales team and the ISAs. What, what I missed there as far as you know, the first few months. I think the months. main thing you, you mentioned follow up, which is most of us aren't very good at follow up for long term mm -hmm. or even midterm. But um, but I like to tie the word consistency in and that's where our systems come into play. Um, so our systems make sure that we are following up and that we're doing it consistently, consistency, consistently. <laughs> I can speak English. Um, <laughs> so that's the key. And having the tech stack and the ability to create those action plans to automate some of that stuff so that we can be more consistent in our follow up. And I think I'm excited to see what comes down the pike. We convert a lot on the first call. Right. We we talk to a person. We figure out what their timeline is. And, and we're doing a lot of that in the first call, but we're also picking up additional as we're building trust and credibility, they're seeing our brand. And so I'm just super excited about how it's all playing well together. Absolutely. Yeah. One thing that I want to point out, Gabe, that you mentioned, and you said it without saying it, is the conversion was higher in the very beginning. Um, and then it's tailored off some. Um, you said part of it was growing pains, but I think another part is just the statistics of our leads. Um, roughly 70%, say they're about six months to further out from being ready to convert. So initially, you know, you're picking up a lot of that immediate, I want to talk now, I want to see somebody now. But once you've kind of gone through those immediate people, that's where the real funnel building and to yeah. Laura's point, the consistency and nurture comes into place. And there is a little bit of a gap where that conversion is going to come down slightly until you start to really hit that sweet spot of, you know, six months or more of nurturing on these leads. And then the numbers come back up. Uh, yeah. It's kind of this weird, you know, effect that our leads have this roller coaster. Uh, it's where a lot of people will come in and see a real high conversion right away and then go two, three months with numbers yeah. declining. But if they continue with it, you start to build and nurture that funnel. Those numbers come back up even higher. You know, it's so funny. And, and uh, you know, we've known each other for quite a while and I teach a lot of stuff. As I was saying it, Laura's speaking, I'm like, you know what? When I was running the numbers for you, 
Um, I was literally, and I'm going to go in there and we defined everything. I was really only looking at our A's, B's, C's, appointment set, pendings, or closed. And the closed are a little funny because we've had a couple of these that have closed that are two sides, right? right. And yet it's still a number. So the conversion actually is, is, is a bit higher than that because we've got two sales out of one lead and that's not factored in, in into the numbers I showed you. But as I was saying it, um, I'm like, shit, I don't, I don't know if we can say that here. Uh, but I was like, shit, I don't think I'm actually looking at cold. Now, anybody rewatching this or joining us like, oh, great. Yeah. Add your cold. But for us again, and I'll, I'll jump in and show you, we define everything and cold to us as a verified real person, but they're not less than 12 months. Uh, there's just a different nurture for us. Yeah. And what's funny is when uh, I look at the converted and what we do, the number when then I add in cold and some of those are going to be unlikely, but a chunk yeah. of those are still going to come through right? Yeah. They were just more than a year. So our definition is more than a year, but verified real person with a home to sell. It's a different nurture game for us because they get less personal phone calls until they get closer. And the number actually went up 8x uh, as far as how many people in that nurture, because I wasn't looking, well, here, let me just show you. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, share a, the screen. I'm a visual learner and process. Uh, <laughs> person. So let me just show you what I was doing. So when we go in, I'm going to kill this real quick. So we're looking in, you know, 416 people that we've brought in in through the into the the Z buyer. Oh, somebody just popped in as we're going live. Uh, uh, we just set an appointment. He just popped in as now. <laughs> oh, did he? Is that what happened? I was trying to look yeah. at the version. Oh yeah, it went up. So went up. Um, when I look at this, I'm only looking at our A's, B's, C's, and I'll pull this up just to show you guys because I am a geek when it comes to we work off a definition, right? So I want to make sure everybody, but cold is a confirmed real person, but not selling or buying soon enough. That is what we call a C, which is worth a monthly phone call on top of other automations. All right. So we're at 24. And I did the math. This is where we're getting at the 7% of the 416. But what's really interesting is as we were talking, I'm like, where are the other real people, though, that we're still nurturing? Look at this number up here. When I add this in, it jumps to 166. I didn't even think wow. about putting that in. Now, again, and if you're watching this and some people, I want to just, you know, cause you're like, oh, great. You added your cold. But for us, cold is a real person, right? It is a real person that we've come in. They have a real address. We've had a conversation and they have a desire to buy or sell. It's just not less than 12 months. Right. Right. So we will still be going through those. So some of those uh, that we've been nurturing will come in. So it didn't dawn on me till Laura was actually talking and I'm like, oh. Wait, so it's actually, you know, quite a bit higher than that if we bring those in. But what, what's exciting about that, and Laura knows this, we're constantly tweaking this and, and figuring out, is it is the long game. All right. And um, what I want to jump in, well, can, can I show kind of what our process is and some of the, the changes? Jordan, is there anything? Absolutely. To yeah, go for it. While right. you're pulling that up, I, I think I've got our next uh, kind of series of this is another, you know, three to six months down the road. I'd be really curious to look at conversion from cold jumping into an A or B stage. You know, I'm going to geek out on this and Laura and, and I are going to sit here. So <laughs> literally here's what I, okay. So we're doing this and it's recorded. So now we're all looking. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kill these right really quick. And again, we do everything in the CRA and there was probably, I should have just done a new one, but what I want to do is I mean this is we also have a handful of referrals right that are referred out. Yep. But what I'm going to do these 142 select all, add a tag. Buyer webinar. All right, I'm just going to tag them so we can right. literally monitor those yeah. through the funnel. So it'd be interesting to see yeah. these what we've been bringing through. So all right. So what I want to talk about though, and some you know, some people probably caught the first round, some did not. We document everything, right? As far as what's the process, so that we can go back and start making changes. And we've changed a, a chunk of this since the last time. But we literally every lead source, we will have an SOP to where we can come through, whether it's the regular Z buyer, uh, you know, our agents I trust. The I'm going to pause lead. you right there for a moment. Oh, yeah. So, so it's not a one and done day game. You build a system and then, but you've got to test it out. So as we're going through this, um, looking at our results, looking at the lead flow, we do update and change it. So just, I just want to make people aware that 
it's not necessary to plug and play. You're going to watch the results. You're going to track the results and then decide where the holes are and make your changes. Absolutely. We, we got asked this, this is a few weeks back, but a customer that spends quite a bit with us, two, three grand a month, um, said, you know, I started with you guys, you know, I spent three months building out this amazing system. And I went through like a two year period where they were converting lead after lead after lead. And then it just stopped. And so they asked us, you know, have your leads changed? What, what did you guys start doing different? Um, and it was a lot of back and forth conversation. And the question ended up being asked, you built this amazing system, but have you touched it in two years? Right. Yeah. No, it, it was working. So why would I touch it? Um, and so, you know, we left the conversation with the agent saying, okay, I know what I need to do. I need to go look at my system because I put it together and just never looked at it again. Yep. 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 Uh, yeah. It's constantly changing. The market's changing, the tech's changing, all of that. Right. So right. we're constantly coming in. So we document everything, um, you know, as far as even just how is it coming in? How is it coming into our follow-up boss to get it created? Right. How are we getting it into Wailopo for the digital remarketing? And it, it literally step by step by step, even to where if it's going to run an action plan, right, linking into that action plan to show what are the steps, what's going to go, what tags are happening to make sure that the automations are happening. All right. And I told some people, I had some people reach out to me wanting this for I said, you have to wait till we do the webinar with with Jordan, then you can have our steps and you can you can tweak it however you guys want. Um, so this is a step I mentioned earlier that early on, so anybody that's thinking about starting up a Z-Buyer or if you just have and you're not seeing the results that you're seeing in the group, right. I was an idiot. I didn't read the comments and stick to it until I went through that course with uh, Isaiah and Nex uh, Real Estate Nexus. This is almost word for word the script that they recommended. And it was just a copy paste ripoff. And I remember the day of the webinar, grabbed it, went into my Slack channel, send it to our head ISA and like, this is what we are saying. And it has made a huge difference. I've if also I noticed- right, your What's ISA that? set an appointment during that training call still. After You're right, they good. did. We yeah. literally had copy and pasted over right away. So anybody like, like, there's some other great stuff in here, but, and I can't even take credit for this other than just implementing it and now making sure that we're trying to stay true to it. Um, but use this script, all right, use it. One of the changes we just made um, is anybody who's on here with a follow-up boss um, is when these come in, we now uh, have it add the note with the script right on the lead profile. So the script is on the lead profile. You don't have to go anywhere from it. It's literally right after the lead is put into follow boss, this script comes in. All right. And then the next part about it, uh, and we're going to edit it down a tiny bit, because if you use this a lot of times, you can jump right to the discovery questions. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, if, if you're listening to this, the key to this script is you can't leave this part out, right? If you start editing, because the identifying, uh, setting it up, and then this is really uh, what is getting them to respond, right? We already know where it's going to go. And then go into your discovery questions, all right? So that, that, that's, that's critical. Um, all right, so then we're going into, we've got this automated uh, a little bit more on how the addresses are coming in a little bit more clear. So if it's not a manual ad, um, what we're doing is we're setting them up for the Wailopo seller experience right. and HomeBot, all right? Uh, and it's, you, it's, it's for us, it's critical that you get both going. Laura, you want to kind of speak about the difference to HomeBot yeah. versus seller experience? Because it's really important if you guys have tools that you're pulling all the levers. Yes. So the Wailopo seller experience um, is based off the zip code of the property. And what it sends to our consumers is uh, basically a mini market report. Um, it shows them what's been listed in their area, what's been sold in their area, if that, if that data is pullable. But one of the really cool features of it is it shows them how many people we actually have in our database at the moment looking for homes similar to theirs. So that's the seller experience. It tells them if they're in a buyer's market or a seller's market, lots of great information. But what I love about ZBuyer and the way we have our automation set up is when those leads come in, the address comes in with many of them and they get populated into the address field. So now in addition to sending them that general market report for their area, they will also have embedded in that report a report from HomeBot, very specific to their property, their mortgage. It tells them how much equity they have built up, 
tons of information. Gabe's showing you what that whole thing looks like. So the top piece is the home bot piece. And whenever they open that home bot or open that seller alert, we get notified. And we've had sellers coming through asking, can you can you create a CMA for me based off of what they looked at in the home bot report? They've asked us to come take a look and see what things they need to do for their home to get them prepared to sell. So we're sending them information that they are finding valuable, that they are actually opening, which gives us the opportunity then to follow up with them. It's a really awesome tool. And it's an automated step, right? And it's something yep. of value, not necessarily asking. Uh, and, and there's a there's a bunch of different versions. I know there's some people that have, uh, they're doing a cloud CMA and things like that. Yep. Um, just chatting with a bunch of teams. I'm working with uh, Robert Slack team a lot because I know they're a new client of yours and they're just, what, number one team probably in the world, but let alone the USA, yeah. <laughs> um, putting together different tools. And it's really nice to send something of value that's not necess necessarily saying sell. Right. or list, right? So this is an automated step that's coming in to, to get that going to them. And, and again, you have to set up some manual and it's just how addresses read depending on what uh, valuation system you're using. And it'll probably come in in the Q&A or in the chat. And again, if you guys have questions, let us know as you go. But yes, they're off. It creates that accurate. opportunity for when you call that lead, you actually have something to go over with them. Like, let's look at the information you got. And, and it Absolutely. gives you that opportunity to build that relationship with that lead and provide them something, <clears throat> quite frankly, they may not be getting from any place else. Right. Yeah. The, and, the other, oh, go ahead, Jordan, sorry. Well, I was going to say, you know, you're not just getting Z buyer leads. Okay? I mean, I, I know you get leads from all over, all different kinds of things. Um, and so it's hard to say, you know, I'm going to go through and call every single lead in my database. Right. You know, you would need a massive team to do that. So what you're doing is you're creating actions and letting people take those actions to direct where does my focus need to be? Where should my team be calling? Instead of just trying to call through thousands upon thousands of people, it's not feasible. It's not going to work. We, no. we, we want to uh, reach out to them based on their behavior and their behavior triggers this person needs a call. So Absolutely. you're right. We're not going through this long list of leads. And you know how agents do. We pull open a lead. We start scrolling down. Devil on one shoulder. Don't call. Don't call. Mm -hmm. Angel on the other. You should call. Well, now we have basically what I, I, I call a metal detector. We have set up smart list and follow up boss based on specific lead behaviors. And that tells us when it's time to pick up the phone and call them, when it's time to take action. This person deserves my attention. So you don't even have to scroll down and, and, and try to figure out whether you should call or not call. We just trust the lists. Yep. Yeah. So so one of the, oh, let's see, I'm on, can you see my, I think I might be on the wrong one. Please. Um, can you see my uh, follow boss? Yeah. Yep. I, Okay. Yep, you're in the right. hand raiser. Like for example, like we'll go into our hand raisers, which that report that we just showed you that we sent out through Wailopa to automate, like right now, I've got 11 people, all different Z buyers between Boise and Denver who are engaging with a report that we're actively reaching out to, right? So we're not even counting when we talked to those, when we were talking about those numbers of 166, I didn't include the unknowns. These are people we have not connected with yet. Uh, and the stops, that's just our AI, but they are literally opening the report. Right. So, you know, some of these 15 days ago, they're fairly new. We're still in that incubation period of nurturing them, but this is an automated step. But I know every single one of these is engaging with HomeBot uh, and it's coming into our system and letting us know that they're engaging with it. Right. So we just now have to monitor the list like Laura was talking about because we have a system. Right. Right. So, not to belabor this point, but you've got to get them on some sort of automated system that offers a value that's not asking uh, necessarily for uh, for a sale, right? To, to list, just give them some value. All right. So our day one, uh, obviously, is the, the phone call, the scripting, um, the uh, alerts going out, and then a text. We're auto filling it. You know, if we don't get them, is there a better time to talk? We also give them uh, a textable link, guys, to homes that are on the market. All right. Especially when you come in here and you start looking at these a ton of these people are looking at a lot of homes, right? And we just get uh, into, uh, into the, you got lots of people looking because some of these are buying, right? You've got to start understanding and speaking the language of where they are in their journey. They came in on a really cool CTA, right? Which is that cash offer that Z buyers gab, uh, gathering for you, but are they also looking, right? So part of the process is inviting them 
to come in and get on the website to start also looking at homes, whether it's homes in their area or the homes uh, that they're looking at pursuing, right? So we got to fish with multiple bait here and get that in there. And I, I hate to you. like belabor the Wailopo thing, but because of what we use, and it doesn't matter what technology <clears throat> you use, but I mean, it does, but um, that textable link is to a specific search that's been created specifically for that client. And so all we have to do is grab the link, drop it into the text message, and they're now seeing properties uh, for sale in their area. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're assuming anybody who's selling a property is going to move. Um, right. So now we're nurturing the dream of the new home, which is what is motivating them as a seller to get their property, get them in on both sides. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right. Hugo said, how are you creating the automation between ZBuyer and HomeBot? That's all done through Zapier, right? Yeah, through Zapier. There's a couple other people that are doing it. Um, 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 oh my gosh. Uh, uh, Jeff Moore with um, Osiris has figured yeah. out some automations, but mostly through Zapier. Uh, my, my caution on that, though, if you do it, is we still have it on here in red. It's, it's a check it, right? You need to double check when they're coming in to just make sure because it's the way that addresses get populated. We just need to make sure that it comes in because sometimes here's a good example. It'll put it in the wrong spot and it doesn't sink in to the seller alert. So you just need to spot check it, all right? So, uh, and again, it's just because when you're creating this, the address has to match exact. So if they spell out street versus it just being ST, how uh, HomeBot and Google have it, it won't work. So just make it a, a step for a VA or an assistant just to double check uh, and watch that. Very cool. Um, another question, Gabe, and you can't say no. So I'm just going to go ahead and say <laughs> Gabe's answer is yes. He will be providing a copy of this updated SOP. Yes. Yes, I will. Which I'm excited because day two has been updated. So this is now we're, yeah. we're, we're newish into this. This is a new tool that uh, that Laura and I love that was there was a piece of this kind of buried in, in the Wailopo tech, but uh, we've turned it into a full on blown tool. So yes. day two, uh, and again, we want to mix it. You'll notice through this, it's not always call, text, email, right? The CTE, you mix those up, mix and match. So you're doing a different version. So now day two, market trends report. And there, there's, there's different versions of this. Again, I'm just gonna show you the one that we use. So on day two, we're gonna email uh, the market trends report. And in this, that I'm sending you guys, I'll show you exactly uh, what it looks like. But again, in our SOP, we just link to everything that it is. So if you want to manually create one, it would take you right in. But here's the email that goes out. Let me just show you guys that so you can see the exact one. Because some of these links, Jordan, when I share it, won't work because I have to give them permissions right. deep into my system. But at least they can rewatch this to get a vision and they've got the steps. Yeah. So the market trends report that goes out, we're also implementing more video yeah. now into it so it's basically um a video that's basically saying hey i want to talk to you about it's 47 seconds uh about what's going on in your area down below there is a link that is uh constantly updating you from uh uh average homes on the market to let me just open it for you yeah let them see uh, it to median list price and even a demand oh sorry i'm zooming hold on i gotta highlight the whole thing here let's do this there what? it is just happened. Please hold. What the heck? Did I open the wrong one here? Should be loading here. This is the right. I don't know what just happened. Ah, but it's a, it's a market much. trend report. I'll just show you really quick. Here it goes. I'll just... <laughs> I'll just build it for you really quick. So we basically do it by an area so that we just have one in there. So we can always send the uh, Boise area, Denver area, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, the link is evergreen once you create it. So you can place it in a template and it won't, it will it should continue to work. Yeah. Uh, uh, so what's nice is it comes in and it gives them information again, right? What's going on with the median list price over the last year? What's going on with the number of the inventory listings coming in? Right, and then the market index. So in the video, it kind of explains what these are. Um, so we're getting that in there and it's a preview bomb bomb video. So when they go through and, and click on it, they can see it. So the market trends report, if you don't have a lot of these coming in, 
I recommend that that is, where did it just go? That this could be a custom bomb bomb video, right? Where you're actually saying their address and or even putting in their address right into this section. So instead of doing an area, uh, you can literally do a full on just address so that they're seeing their address on there. We're just scaled up a little bit more to use it in different, in different markets. Uh, but as we're transitioning to the agent sending it, we'll have them do it custom to exactly their address. So, so we're excited about paying this. On day, what is this, day two that we're on now, day two, Correct. we're sending um, a, a market trends report with a video explaining the numbers to them um, in, that, in that email that's going out. Correct. And we're just doing one per market in there. So, so this is a big one we're excited about. Yep. Uh, and then anybody looking for a cash offer, we found like they're in any seller, really, they're excited about who do you have, right? We get asked this all the time on listing appointments uh, as agents, all right? Do you have buyers? What do you have going for this, right? So another one that we're doing that we're sending out is send them actually a list of what your active and hot buyers. So we do another video. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to hear it, um, but let me try this, see if you can hear it or not. Corp EXP, right here in Treasure Valley. Hey, want to reach out. I want to tell you about an exciting tool that we have, the thing that you... All right, it's breaking up because of the Zoom, I think. But what it does is it goes through this report and it literally shows them how many people we have in our database. This is their home. They'll recognize the spot. How many people we have in our database looking for a home like theirs, Right. Uh, and then coming through and then showing them what our marketing reach is based on our digital marketing. So again, not just asking if they're ready to sell, but showing them who you have in your database uh, that may be interested in that home. Absolutely. Right? I, I think in here, you know, you're still talking about the buying aspect. You know, it, it's not them buying a home, but you're talking about bringing buyers to it. Um, and anyone who has sold and bought a home can absolutely say buying a home is the part they want to focus on. Uh, okay. Selling a home, it, it's not fun. You don't like to pack up your stuff. You don't like people coming through your house. It's yep. just clutter and it's not fun. So a lot of what you're doing is focusing on one, giving them numbers and value without saying, how can I sell your home? And then you're focusing on the buying aspect with Laura. You talked about that earlier. That's where the emotion is. That's where the excitement yep. is, the appeal to the process. And I think sometimes when we're talking to leads, when we're calling seller leads, we tend to to focus far too much at the beginning of that call on the sale, listing their home. Yeah. Um, we need to slow down. Uh, Gabe and I are big proponents of this is, is let's find out their story. What, you know, what, why are they moving and what are they excited about and what do they love about and what do they hate about? Um, What's the next chapter look like? Yeah, What is exactly. this new beginning that you're taking? And how can we come alongside and help you with that? Right. And then at the end of the call, it's here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. Let's meet. <laughs> we just we brought on and again, we're always learning as well. I don't know if you know Lee Garland. Uh, he's out. I want to say Mississippi, I think. Uh, known him for quite a while. He has a, a really successful team. They do a ton of listings, uh, guaranteed sales, things like that. And he came on with our team the other day and he said, in this opening script, and we're working this in as well, it's just ask them. And by the way, Jordan, you know, where are you thinking about moving? Yep. Like get away from the sale part, get them now back into that mental game, uh, uh, space of where they're going, right? Yep. They're the dream. What's the vision? What's the yeah. goal? That's what's motivating them. So let's Absolutely. talk about what's motivating them, right? Yeah. A lot of our first few days is more about them and their journey, but yep. you triggered something. I stopped sharing because I wanted to make sure we don't miss something here. So you, you brought up Jordan that, you know, we're focusing a lot on, you know, their, their dream, their vision, even then showing them that we have buyers. Cause again, they came in looking for an offer. But yep. yet we tend to just want to ask for listings, but mm -hmm. I want to make sure that everybody uh, is not missing in this opportunity. So we are showing you the A's, B's, C's, the people that we've converted, right? Spoke to on there, but I want to make sure everybody isn't missing this aspect. When we are talking about our buyers, right? That are in there, our sign calls, our PPC, wherever they're coming from, here is what is not being, we weren't leveraging near enough. And we're now training to it more with our Z buyer database. Everybody that you're getting from ZBuyer, whether you spoke to them or not, if you didn't realize this, and, and maybe I'm just dumb, I didn't until the other day, is sitting in your database as an off-market opportunity. Yep. 
see all these agents posting and asking and you have investors like, you know, looking for things off market or whatever it is, or we're trying to convert buyers. Why are we not reaching out more often? You know, it's like, hey, Laura, I know we've had a hard time connecting. Would you be curious in some off market properties that I know that might be for sale in Boise, in Denver, whatever it is? Get that conversation going, find out what she's looking for. Now I go back into my follow boss, pull all my Z buyer that I have addresses that are potentially looking for offers. And now I can reach out to them with a different message. Hey, I've been reaching out. I'm not sure if you're ready to list or still think about it, but I have a buyer that's qualified, ready to go, looking for a home like yours in your area. Are you still thinking about selling? And that's value to that seller, but it, it, it huge value to that seller, but it's also huge value to your buyers. Because we don't think about the 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 people in our database, the seller leads, as um, off market properties. I love yeah. it. Gabe brought this up, and I was like, "Heck yes!" Because we can now tell our buyers that are having a hard time finding properties that we may have some off market properties, and now we're you know able to tell those sellers that we've got buyers looking for a property like yours. It's 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 awesome. Yeah. Another <laughs> yeah. agent um, and. EXP team leader too, Sasha Chapman. He's in Texas. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him, Gabe, but he was talking about for both his buyers and sellers, that off-market approach has brought him so much success, especially a lot of buyers are still hesitant. They're kind of concerned to jump into the market. You know, can I afford the market right now? Can I be aggressive enough in my offer? And this idea of an off-market property, it piques this curiosity. What does this mean? What you, you're telling me, I don't necessarily have to compete with yeah. everyone else in my market. And it's getting a lot of success and traction for him. It's, it's huge. I think this has been a big shift that we've learned over the few months. And again, I, I should have known this already going in, but you know, I'm dense is, you know, cash offer is great, but, and I don't know if you have this stat, Jordan, but how many of the leads coming through actually want the cash offer, right? 7% nationwide. There we, there we go. Right. Less than 10% even want that. And I want to make sure we remember that stat. And it's, to, it's harder. To rephrase, to rephrase that, um, that's 7% of the people saying that they would even consider reducing the price of their home for a faster sale. Exactly. Not saying they want a cash offer, just saying they would be willing to reduce the price of their home for a faster sale. And that transaction. brings us to a key question in that initial phone call. What's more important to you, that we sell your home quickly or that we try to get the highest price possible? And they almost always say highest price possible. Yeah. So yeah. it turns into a traditional listing. It's this whole thing is having a conversation, right? So the opportunities are there. And that's just what I want to make sure is that, you know, we live leveraged uh, unconverted buyers in our database for 10 years, right? Doing reverse prospecting, especially for sellers. I've got all these buyers looking, but I've not really seen anybody speaking to how are we taking unconverted seller leads and leveraging them in the same way. And these are set up perfectly because you can speak I've got a list of seller potential sellers in my database that may be interested or have expressed uh, interest in the past in offers on their home. Would you be interested in some of these off-market properties, right? They haven't been listed yet. And we're not uh, leveraging that aspect of it to our buyers. Even if they don't go buy that or you set that appointment, it's the same thing. It's even if 7% if of them don't respond, you don't go to those. What about the 93% that are at least like, yes, I'd be interested in some addresses or a conversation and it gets your conversation going. What about separating yourself from the rest of the pack? Nobody Absolutely. else is asking that question. And so you are literally calling them with something that nobody else has offered them yet, which is off-market properties. Absolutely. In, in the, in number one step, in, this is my opinion, Gabe, you might have something different, but the number one and the first most important step to converting a lead is you have to have a conversation. And so figuring out whatever it is that'll open that conversation. And for this, this might be a channel that a lot of people just aren't responding to the generic, here's the listings we have, view properties in your market. But all of a sudden they hear off-market properties and it's different. Like you said, Laura, no one else is saying this. So it's going to pique this you know, curiosity. What is this? Why have I not heard of this? Is this something I should be taking advantage of? Yeah. What do you have that nobody else has access to, right? If they can go to Zillow or Realtor or any agent's MLS and pull the same, it's, it's not unique. Not that it's not valuable, it's not unique, but we need to start leveraging more of the off-market properties in our conversations with buyers and offering them something of value that they can't get somewhere else. Right. So, sorry, I didn't want to go too far on a tangent, but we were talking about the 
conversation started, I want to make sure we, we were getting that. So, um, and I think I saw it a couple times in there, Jordan. Yes, I'm sharing this whole SOP with Jordan afterwards. So they'll have this to send out so you can create your steps and make it however you want. Um, so after our, um, after day three, and we send out this heat map, the list of active buyers, obviously we do a walkthrough or a, a call again uh, to see if we can uh, set up a walkthrough to just start uh, getting appointments on there. Uh, an email letting them know about the voicemail. And then we're tagging in, uh, Follow Boss does not have campaign texting. Uh, it's just not something that they uh, do or anything like that. So I'll also share this with you, Jordan. What we do is after day three, because again, we are trying to hit them uh, multiple times with value up front, but then things of automation that we can get in front of them to get them to hit one of our lists to trigger a priority. So I think somebody is asking if I was using call action or fub for texting. I use um, Agent Legend and you guys can have this. So we have an automation that as soon as this happens, it applies a tag that will trigger, depending on the city, this campaign. And it is a voicemail drop and text campaign. We've tweaked it a little bit uh, for cash offer verbiage. Again, just as we're kind of changing what we're saying and trying to get the conversation. Everybody can have this as well. I've transcribed the voicemail drops that Laura and I sat down and together side by side for a day and a half creating these. Uh, but I transcribed the voicemails uh, that we're using. Uh, and I've got, everything's locking up here, sorry. Did I lose you guys? No. Nope. No, you're, we can you're here. All right, everything's got a weird delay. So anyway, I transcribed all the voicemails for you guys. And then it's also links into our site. So we've changed up some of the links now sending them to what iBuyers are looking for, different things. But it's a, it's a fairly long process. Again, syncing them back. Uh, to the website, homes for sale. It's a combination of seller tools and then homes for sale to kind of see where they're at. So I'll get this to you well as well. Uh, and what's great about this, any responses that uh, come into this automatically feed right into follow up boss okay. and uh, notify us that they're engaging okay. with that or responding to it. So yeah. I'll get that sent over to everybody as well. Uh, sorry, it's really lagging here now. Gabe, I know we're Gabe, I know we're all around and we've got a bunch of different things we're talking about. One thing, because I don't think how much time you've got, you've got is is what can we say about can we say about the leads? And I'm kind of losing the prospecting leads. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> this is something. And if I cut out Laura, you might have to I'm getting a weird warning here. Prospecting on my leads. <laughs> right? And you can speak to like I, I, the exact they're they're a little bit more aged. I don't know exactly how they get to there, but we've started adding these in as mm -hmm. a different option. Uh and we're we're honestly finding them equivalent, I would almost say. But mm -hmm. what we're seeing is the message is a tiny bit different because they've been thinking about it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Uh so getting in front of them. Again, but I think they're a little further down the funnel. Uh, but we're actually, as far as the agents on the team are concerned, they don't know a difference, right? Yep. Uh, so we're bringing them in, and I can I can share with you the prospecting SOP, how we're bringing them in as well, and what we're setting them up on because they just come in a little bit different. Which you so can speak. We've only been on those leads. What did you say, Jordan? Thirty three days, thirty four days, something like that. Um, that was for Texas. The prospecting okay. leads. Oh, I'm sorry, I got them mixed up again. Yeah, the, the prospecting leads for Boise and Denver, I think you guys have been getting for around three months, four months okay. or so. Um, what I will say though, um, and I'm sure Gabe or you can attest to this, you can attest to this prospecting leads have prospecting a similar conversion. Yes. Um, to the first months worth of leads that you guys months, reached, worth of that are six months, months old now. Yes. Yeah. So we're, we're, we're getting into there. They're almost, I think it was a tiny, tiny bit uh, lower for us, but I also found one of the adjustments we made is how they were coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, they were missing one of the automations. So that's been adjusted. Uh, so they were a little bit lower, but um, I mean, anybody that's not doing the prospecting is a, it's a different category of leads as e-buyers coming in. Uh, my advice on those and what we're is we're hitting them a little bit more frequent up front yeah. with more automation down the funnel. And I think they've been chatting with a few other agents at that point. But again, I think the key is, is they've just been asked to sell, sell, sell and list. They haven't been asked where they're going, what's happening. I think what we're seeing is 
uh, because there were, and, and again, you can speak to well, the difference between them, Jordan, but yeah. to me, it and, seems like probably held off early on because it was an idea. And I think a majority of these are also buying. And I think they're more concerned where they're going, what's going to happen before talking about selling. And if we stop as an agent and think about it, that's fantastic because now there's two sides in there. But yeah. somebody yeah. who's selling, especially in the market we've been in for the last few years, uh, are more concerned about where they're going and not being homeless than yep. if they yep. can stay at home, yep. right? Yep. So, so I think we just need to really look at that and see what's going on. And then Texas, I'm, I'm excited about Texas because we just started and there were 33 days in. That's the one I was getting excited about. <laughs> yeah. I can try and pull it. Sorry, my computer has been really weird. I think it's now stopped freezing up. But on the prospecting side, uh, in, in te- or not in the prospect, I think we're just, we're just doing the regular in Texas. We're 33 days in, uh, have uh, two A's, three now's, uh, uh, two appointment sets. And I think we're signing one of those in 33 days. So that gives me excitement that the tweaks and adjustments we've made on the other side should start increasing because we've now started fresh in Texas with the new process. Right. So that's what really gets me excited about that. Yeah. Gabe, we've talked about a lot here. What are we missing? Uh, I'll, I'll say what I was missing, right? Yep. And you know, part of it's by plan. Is you, you, you have to stay consistent. We were still figuring out how to tie it together with our tech stack. So you can't be 100% consistent if you are making adjustments. But I feel like we're definitely getting more in tune with what the process is, what the message from changing the initial script to now adding more value add at the beginning. But here's what I think in general, and again, working with a couple of your other clients and their teams to tie into the tech stack is documenting it. You have to get a process so that when you go and look at last month's or the months before uh, people that came in, what were the steps? You have to be able to compare that. Was it happening? Maybe you built the steps, but it wasn't happening. We're not perfect. We find holes all the time. Like we just found one here recently. We're like, oh, this step's getting missed. So it's create a process is what most most agents are, are missing. I'm giving you mine, just edit it. Even if you think it's crap and keep one thing, just put it in writing, all right? Uh, follow through with it and then inspect it. Yep. So, and, and the inspecting it, and again, I, I learned from my own failures is we were, I think we might've inspected it too much early on, right? To see a yep. change. But then I think now we kind of got on cruise control uh, with the market shifting a little bit this spring with interest rates and what's going on and didn't inspect it close enough to adjust some of the tools that we had available. Right. Um, I think we've already had the mindset, but most people don't that this is the nurture game. I think just at six months, we're going to, I think we got some of the low hanging fruit and now we're going to start, especially when I looked at that cold list, we're going to start seeing the conversion coming through now on, on the nurture side of it. But it is a long game like anything. Well, also, I just want to say something here. When you look at our calls, our ABCs, the ones that the number of people that have a real phone number that are, are you know, we have real people that will have spoken to us. That number compared to a lot of other lead sources, in my opinion, is above average. They're coming in with their real people, real phone numbers, real emails. and they have, we have spoken to them. So to me, that's exciting. Yeah. And Gabe and Laura, this is for you guys, you know, a big point here. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know if you guys do it or not, but anything you get that comes in, that's not a real phone number. They don't truly own a property. Submit it back to us. We replace those leads. I always forget that. (laughs) (laughs) Gabe, the number could be so much bigger. Okay. I like it. Yeah. Um, to be, it's not a lot. There's there's not a ton. Like no, I'm, but uh, that's what I was saying. Yeah. It's huge. It's it's abnormal. Yeah. For most um, resources. You put me on the spot, Jordan. So I'm gonna put you on the spot. You're just gonna Go say. Okay. So you're just gonna say. It. But if it has a bad number, I can return it. But I'm gonna leave it in my CRM mm-hmm. and still email Skip them. Skip trace them. it, and you can do whatever you want, and you can find the number. But absolutely. Well, um, Wailopo helps with that too, I was just going to say. Absolutely. Yeah, there, there's a lot of, you know, great ways you can do it. Um, let us know and we're going to replace the lead. 
Um, because our guarantee is we're going to send you a lead with correct information the first time. Um, not that you have to go back and skip trace it. And that's perfectly fine. And I'm glad you do it. Utilize those leads because it was someone who was curious, wanted to see some numbers, but maybe wasn't quite sure about being called. So they, right. you know, put down a four instead of a five at the end of their phone number. Um, find the number and reach out to them, but let us know that, hey, this came through with a bad number and we're going to replace it for you. Okay. I love that. I actually forgot all about that. So I'm glad you you brought it up. So I mean, and anybody, I know there's some 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 you've been you've been getting them in there. Is Z buyer included in the CRM? I don't know if there's a CRM with Z buyer. We do not have a CRM um, included. We have a lot that we work with though, um, and have direct integrations with. And then I know for you guys, we've built out um, a different integration through Zapier just to get some more detailed information to have some extra tags coming in automatically without the manual work having to happen. Yeah, no, it's been great. There'd be so much with with Zapier to to get in there. I mean, and honestly, if you're if you're listening to this and you're not doing this, has been a great way um, to scale up the list site, right? It, it, seller lead generation is tough. You guys have really done a great job bringing it in with a high quality information, uh, and this is really one of the pillars that we're building on in 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 Texas as we're growing and scaling uh, out there. So, uh, well, gonna I'm going to put on my sales manager hat for a moment. If if y'all are out there, you're looking for a good team or you know someone who needs to be on a good team, uh, I think we're a great team. We are in Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, Austin, Phoenix, Denver, Boise. Um, and we would love to have someone who can see the value in the systems that we have and can take those appointments and take this to the closing table. Sorry. No, no, I love it. I shameless no. marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and that's what we do. I mean, Joe, like we're doing this with another team in Denver, right? So if, if you are like, come in, you use all of our systems and our goal is how do we help you now build it to now step out and do your own team on the tech stack that we helped you uh, build into your own system and your, you know, lead providers and all of that. So it's really kind of our goal through our system is bring people in, the ones that want to stay and just be fed can or teach those how to grow their own teams on their own tech stack with, with you know, companies like ZBuyer. Absolutely. Um, in you know, not to just jump on the bandwagon here, but Gabe, you and I have worked together for some time now. Um, and there's a couple of things I've learned about you. One, when it comes to technology and automations, you're amazing. You've built an amazing system. Um, but aside from that, every time I talk to you, it's I'm traveling. I'm here. I'm here. I'm off a plane because you teach. It's constantly what you're doing. You're teaching. Um, so whenever you're looking at joining a team, if you do, you know, look at joining Gabe's team and the core group team, you're not just joining a tech heavy and automation team. It's a team that's focused about growth and learning and knowledge. And it's a team that has really collectively came together to hold a large amount of knowledge. So kudos awesome. to you guys. Thank you. I appreciate that. And Laura too, right? She's right there. She's been coaching most of her career. and now Absolutely. So yeah, it, it's our passion. And again, we love creating the systems that take the opportunities and appointments and then hand it off to the agents, right? That's really where our passion is. And, you know, like I said, I'm working with some of your other clients as well. So it's exciting to brainstorm. I didn't show it here because it's not mine, but... Uh, Kat Flanagan with the Robert Slack team has done a couple really cool tools uh, that she just taught on in Vegas. And I'm going to be in Orlando uh, in two weeks, I think. And she's teaching it again. But I'm excited when we do this again. There's another really cool thing that they've implemented uh, for all of their, their you know, Z buyer seller leads. And we're ripping it off and duplicating it. And she knows it. So that's, I don't mind this being recorded. But I'm really excited to kind of share that with you guys, or you'll probably see it from them because, man. You've got Robert Slack team now coming in and doing this. I mean, yeah. you've got here, right now. It's ha they're a very process uh, oriented team as well, and it's if you follow the steps, it works. But you have to follow the steps. I think Absolutely. that's the one thing you'll find in common um, with most of the high producers in the country is they have processes and systems. Um, and it's just so that every client <clears throat> really receives the same experience, uh, the same value the same level of care and that we are able to do it consistently um, and regularly for each of our leads that come in and, and systems are the key guys having if all it is is a checklist to start with then start with a checklist decide how you want to approach the leads look at the tools that you have how can I leverage this tool with this lead and then just build the steps and then follow them 
Absolutely. Gabe, oh. Laura, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks thank for having you. us. It's always fun to have you too. Um, everyone, this will be available in the Z Buyer Mastermind group, also on our YouTube channel. Um, I will send out an email to everyone who joined today with the SOP from Gabe. And then I think we should plan on three to six months down the road, sometime in there, doing another one of these, seeing, continuing to see what's new, what's changing, what do numbers look like, and you know, how are we measuring that growth? Yeah, I'd love to. And I think, oh, good, Laura. I was going to say he's holding us accountable. I love it. We have to up our game <laughs> continually. And, and again, we all have shit in our business we need to work on, right? And things like that. And one of the big things Laura and I are working on, and I shared with Jordan prior to this, so I just again just you know, being transparent. One of our biggest things now is I want these numbers to get higher. And for us, it's appointment now to contract is going to be a big focus. We're bringing in other people to really now focus on, you know, you can't just do this and then get an agent if you have a team in front of somebody, if you're yourself, get in front and still not how to close the listing. So that's a big area because we've been very buyer heavy for years, right? We, we did over 800 homes the last year I was running it before I started building tech. And most of those were buyers, right? In that year. So we're really shifting uh, what we're doing uh, on the list side. So I'm going to add to the, in the, you know, three, four, five months, whatever we do the next webinar, uh, I really want to help show what we've changed, not just getting it to the appointment, because most everything that I've shown you is going to get you that conversation appointment, but what are we doing to get from appointment to signed listing? Because that's a big area we need to work on. Yeah, it is. That's where we're, we're, we're weak right now. Yeah. We'll yeah, fix it. Uh, Which I think is what makes you guys and your team so successful because you're not afraid to say, hey, this is an area of opportunity, an area of weakness. And you look at it as a chance to grow. Mm -hmm. If you don't identify where your holes are, you can't, you can't plug them. Right. So, so I'm excited and I love, you know, being accountable to that. And if you don't have systems, you can't identify the holes. <laughs> Absolutely. And you can't measure the growth. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. We're, we're super excited. Jordan, always a pleasure. And I'm excited to see what you guys are doing. You're always kind of changing what you guys are doing and different products and all that stuff too. So I can't wait to see what you guys are doing and, and grow more with you guys. Absolutely. Everyone, thank you so much for jumping in today. Bye everybody.